Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we're going to be doing a weekly installment of our meta breakdown, the top performing decks in the MTG Arena client. Um, typically we do a video each week on Historic, uh, Standard, and Alchemy, looking at both best of one and best of three. This week I'm just going to focus on Historic. I got my booster shot and I'm not feeling the greatest. So recording a bunch of these videos all in one shot does kind of get a little draining today. Uh, but I'll do next week and then have all the formats. Standard and Alchemy don't change too much, to be honest. And seeing what we saw from Alchemy this week, it's pretty much Dragons versus Teferi versus like um, kind of Inquisitor Captain decks. Uh, the buff will be coming in the next week or so. Uh, so once that comes out, it should help to see if the meta shakes up any bit. Um, so. What we do here is we get all our data from a tool called Untap GG. It is a free to use companion tool that tracks all your gameplay on the arena client, win loss rates, uh, your card collection, suggest decks, stuff like that. It's free to use um, for the deck tracking ability. Uh, there's some add-ons that you can look to, but the, for the most part, a lot of the core functionality is free to use. The link is in the video description down below if you want to hop up on that. Um, I can show you really quick. It'll look like this. Um, so it does all your tracking, your breakdowns, your win rates, stuff like that. It'll do your collection, cards, wild cards, everything like that. So really helpful tool, runs alongside uh, your games. Um, but what we do is we look at kind of the crowdsource data um, and see what's kind of trending each week for the meta. We are looking at historic best of one. First, January 9th to today, which is the 16th, Platinum to Mythic rank, 48,000 games sample size. Um, one thing that came from the last video, some folks were asking for the deck list to be posted. Um, so I'll post them either in the body or the comments of this video. Um, I'll do it for like the first four or five deck lists. Uh, we can kind of go from there depending on what's kind of the themes each week. Uh, so you can easily import those to Arena. Um, so up first is actually a surprise deck, uh, one that we haven't really seen. This kind of came out of nowhere. Um, there's always been Merfolks. It's never been a top tier deck. It's always been like a crowd favorite, um, but it is uh, 160 games, 63% win rate almost. So it's a collected company deck and you're built around Merfolk Synergy. So you have uh, Sylvian of Sea and Sky. This was from Modern Horizons 2 that was introduced as part of the Jumpstart collection. Um, so Sylvian itself, it's a three mana. Uh, it itself gets indestructible as long as you control two other merfolks. It draws a card when it attacks, and your other merfolks have ward one, meaning it costs one extra mana for your opponent to target the spells. Otherwise, the spells get cancel countered. So what you're trying to do with the deck, you have Mirror Regery that could act as a lord, giving all your merfolks plus one one. Uh, also, whenever you play a merfolk spell, you could tap her and tackle permanent. So you could ramp, get rid of blockers untap a creature after it attacked, a whole bunch of stuff like that. You have Bist Binder, that's just a two mana Lord. You have Silvergill Adept, which in this deck is, for the most part, two mana draw a card. Um, so it just kind of replaces itself. You have the Trickster that could kind of interrupt uh, abilities, a flash threat can surprise in blockers. You have Master of the Pearl Trident, which is another Lord. So you have uh, three Lords, at two to three mana, plus Sylvian, which is kind of a Lord in a way. Uh, this gives you island walk, meaning that if your opponent has an island, basic island, or something like a steam vents that has an island in the text, those creatures can't be blocked. Um, and then just kind of rounding it out, you have the miscaller, which uh, is a way to get around, say, something being reanimated, collect a company from your opponent, anything like that. You have the kind of seek card, the digital only, so this can replace a land or a merfolk in your hand with a tropical island, OG duel. Uh, and then just some one drops as well. Pair it with Collected Company and some Spell Pierce. So interesting to see if this kind of holds or if it's just a flash in the pan deck. Second up, another deck that kind of is on the ancillary but looks like it's had a little bit better of a week this week. This is Rakdos Goblins, predominantly a mono red goblins deck that's built around Muxus. So these decks have been around for quite some time since the original Jumpstart last year, I believe. Um, so you're looking to kind of get ahead on mana. You have stuff like Skirt Prospector, uh, as well as Wily Goblin to ramp you up. You're trying to cast a Muxus. And although Muxus is the big payoff, this is really a deck that's looking to play with Cranko Mob Boss, giving it haste, making a bunch of tokens, using uh, Conspicuous Snoop to potentially copy the ability on the stack. Um, the notable things with Rakdos in this deck, 
you get Munitions Expert, another Modern Horizons card. Basically, it's removal. That's also a creature at instant speed based on the number of goblins you have. And then Slinga Slingang Lieutenant. Uh, creates tokens when it enters, and you could sacrifice um, to do drains. Now, notable with this, so if you're playing against 9 lives, 9 lives stops damage when they have this eliminated 9 lives lock. This is life loss, so this gets around that. So this is really a clean answer to that lock that Goblins typically doesn't have. Um, with Black, you also get Phyrexian Tower, just another way to kind of ramp up. Sorry, just give me one sec. Ah, uh, sorry, drink coffee. We're a mess today. Uh, booster messed me up. Been uh, fluish all day. Um, so we see mono red aggro. There's two versions. I'm actually going to post the list for the one below. Uh, this one's a little bit more relevant. So the differences with this, this version here is still on the Annex and Fervent Champion. Um, Fervent Champion's kind of lackluster. It's only good in multiples, plus Embercleave is really too slow for the format. Um, with this particular version here, and we'll get to Galvari food in a sec, um, Fanatical Firebrand is a good effect on one because it can be used again for removal. So if your opponent goes turn one Soul Warden, um, Dragon Rage Chandler, anything like that, it can be used. It can be used in conjunction with something like Stomp to deal three damage or paired with Chain Whirler. With Torbrand out, it can deal three damage on its own, so kind of some synergy there. And then this version playing the Ferocidons and Roiling Vortex. Um, I've been ranking up uh, in part with this deck as well, but my version is not playing Torbrand, and it's playing uh, some Chandras and the full four of Rampaging Ferocidons. Uh, I've been kind of playing around with some of the numbers. Uh, I also play Static Discharge, which is a very good burn spell. Um, Golgari Food, uh, this is just kind of a squirrel sacrifice value engine meat hook. Um, the food decks have been around for a while, they kind of just have their place. Bad against kind of combo-y decks, good against these like creature-y mid-range or control decks. Uh, we have Enchantress, which is the 9 lives lock deck, so Solemnity plus 9 lives allows you to create a lock where your opponent cannot deal damage to you. Um, so you can kind of lock them out of the game, and then you win either with making very large creatures with Destiny Spinner, uh, out of your lands, approach the second sun, or make a bunch of angel tokens with Sigil of the Empty Throne. Um, we see Auras, another deck that just kind of consistently puts up. Um, strap on a bunch of Aura enchantments, stuff like Sentinel's Eye, Cartouche, Arcane Flight, stuff like that, uh, to either Core Spirit Dancer, which draws you cards, or Shram Senior Edificer. Um, this version is playing Hushbringer. We tried a, a one to this week. Uh, I also tried out some Odonto Vanguards just as a stickier threat. Um, this deck's always good. I always find with Auras you lose to yourself more than you lose to anything else at times. Because you're kind of an engine deck and you need one of these on turn two, um, you sometimes are hesitant to play it on turn two if you don't have the protection of Selfless Savior. But if you don't have these going, your deck's just kind of a mopey kind of like you know one mana one ma two mana creatures and then we just kind of average middling kind of enchantments uh they really kind of get souped up when you have like core spirit dancer shrama uh squirrel twin combos green white uh, this is a life gain infinite heliod combo um, this has been around pretty much every week it's fallen off a little bit but basically the conjunction of heliod plus scurry oak plus any sort of soul sister effect so soul warden Luminarch Veteran or Prosper Sin Keeper, anything that when a creature enters a battlefield you gain a life, creates an infinite loop where you put a counter on Scurry Oak from Heliod that creates a token that gains you a life that puts a counter and you basically get infinite life as the backup line of Voice of the Blessed and Trellisara is just big beaters paired all together with Collected Company. Um, Angels, just adding Inquisitor Captain to this list just gives you basically eight copies. This deck generally struggles. You know, once they get swept, um, this now allows them to have eight ways to kind of go from there. See five color Dragon Storm. Uh, this is an all-in combo deck that's looking to play out of the graveyard. So you either Mizzix Mastery back a Dragon Storm, or you can Mizzix Mastery back an Emergent Ultimatum that gets you Dragon Storm, or you can cast Unburial Rites, getting back a Scholar of the Lost Troves, which gets you any of said cards. Um, and then basically with the Terror of the Peaks out, you have two copies of Bladewing the Risen, 
They legend rule each other, consistently bringing one back to the battlefield that does infinite damage to your opponent. Uh, we see Rakdos Arcanist, uh, kind of a self-mill, grindy, kind of like Jund in Modern. Uh, looking to flashback spells with Dreadhorde Arcanist and Kroxa. And then you have your discard package, stuff like that. Uh, I think we'll just kind of quickly go over, we'll stop at Reanimator. Um, self-mill, basically Priest of the Fell rights. Uh, as well as Unburial Rites are late to dinner, and you have ways to put cards into your graveyard like Stitcher Supplier, Ashiok, or Faithful Mending. And as early as turn three, you can bring out like a Ginger Taxis, Shieldred, Sarah's Emissary, Elish Norn, or Massacre Worm. Um, so I'll paste a bunch of these deck lists um, and we'll go from there. Um, like I said, like this is the current version of Mono Red that I've, I've played a lot of games with this deck. So I'm currently trying the Static Discharge. I'm trying out two Chandras over the Chain Whirler. I don't play Torbrand. I find it too slow at four mana. And it's contingent on you having a board state already. And then just one Chandra. I like the card advantage of that. Um, I have a 64% win rate, 102 and 58. So I'm a little bit of a bad streak the other day. Um, but I've kind of consistently been in the 65 to 70% win rate with this deck. Um, so best of three, best of three. Uh, so same population size, January, or sorry, same date range, January 9th to 16th. Um, here what we have is 12,000 matches. Best of three tends to always have a smaller population. Um, so what we have is Azoria's Affinity. Um, so kind of an artifact, mid-rangey kind of value deck. So you play cards like Esper Sentinel, which can draw you cards. Uh, Ingenious Smith can find you kind of key artifacts. Um, the Thought Monitor gets its cost reduced for each artifact you control. So this can effectively be a 1 blue mana 2-2 two -two flyer that draws 2 cards. Um, you're playing cards like Reverse Engineer that have Improvise as well as Metallic Rebuke. This, so you can tap artifacts you control to reduce the cost. So reduce this down to blue blue for example, or this down to blue. And this is basically Counterspell for 3, draw, two, draw 3 cards actually. Um, and then the way they kind of win by going over the top, you have the Black Staff of Waterdeep that can turn any of your artifacts into a 4-4. Um, you have Shadow Sphere, which gives them Trample and Lifelink. And then you have Nettle Cyst, which gives a creature plus 1-1 one, one for each artifact or enchantment you control. You also have access to things like Treasure Map in the mana base, which counts as an artifact line. So it gives you a artificial artifact count in the deck itself. So we're seeing Affinity kind of stand out this week. Jun Sacrifice, this is kind of the go-to. You always have a Sacrifice variant. Um, this version is opting to go more the Trail Food version. Um, so you have Trail of Crumbs. They're playing Meat Hook Massacre now as a Sweeper, playing one Corvold Main, two in the sides. Um, so this is kind of the tried and true deck. This has been around since the inception of the historic format. Just slight variations. We've seen them cut the bow striders. They're playing the Squirrels now, stuff like that. Uh, Squirrel Twin, similar to the best of one version, um, but we have like some Ranger Captain of Eos as well as a Johnny's Welcome, um, a stickier way to get the life gain um, that can't be interrupted or dis disrupted. So kind of a variation there. Uh, we see Jeskai Lotus Field as well as Blue White. Um, these are kind of, in essence, the same deck, just kind of tweaks around. The core of the deck is it's a Blue White X deck that's using Strict Proctor and Stifle um, to allow you to ramp up with Lotus Field by making it so you don't have to sacrifice lands. Uh, this version here has a bit more interaction. Um, we're seeing the Alchemy card Divine Purge see some play in this deck now, uh, good against the Collected Company decks, but this version, you know, you have Anger, Flame Blight, Bless Bolt, some Unholy Heats, Helix, so just some more removal there. This one's a little bit harder on control. Um, both the lists are playing discontinuity as a way to kind of steal your opponent's turn and then primarily going to win through a, a Shark Typhoon, whether hard cast or instant speed. Is it Phoenix? Kind of a go-to. We're seeing Delver getting played in some numbers. Uh, a lot of them notably will have the Crackling Drake in the sideboard just as a way to get around the graveyard hate that comes post-board. So just kind of a fair beatdown deck. Uh, Golgari Food, which we saw, and Is it Phoenix? Um, so those are the decks. I'll post some of these, like I said, in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think, if there's any decks that are you've been playing and having success with that have kind of flown under the radar. Um, one deck that I've been playing 
Oh, let me go back. So I have it here. Um, I saw it. Uh, they'll have a video later this week. I've been tuning it. Uh, burn. I'm actually I'm technically nine and zero if I didn't punt like an onboard lethal um, against Auras, where I just forgot to activate my Roiling Vortex to stop life gain. Um, but it's kind of a burn deck. Um, so get to Lava Runner, Soul Scar Mage, Bomac Courier, and Viashino. I got this off Resident Genius, I think, off MTG Arena Zone. Um, I've been tweaking it. Uh, like for one thing, you can play Luris as a companion. It's just a ton of burn in the deck. Um, you're playing Electro Static Blast. That gets you some card advantage. So I've been having fun with this. Uh, I'm closing in on Mythic with this particular one. I think I'm up to Diamond 2 with it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm like partway through Diamond 2. So moving up uh, with this one here. But this has been a fun deck as well. That kind of on the radar for best of one. Anyways, thanks for watching. As always, if you do enjoy this content, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could drop a like, comment, and if you haven't done so, consider subscribing to the channel. Like I said, we do these weekly for each of the formats on Arena, just this week. Given my booster, I'm just gonna do this one for Historic, but we also have gameplay video for a number of formats. Um, right now, I am kind of more focused on Historic just because that's the one I'm enjoying the most, but if you wanna see gameplay, particularly uh, best of one, I do a lot of demo decks there. Um, really just kind of showing off what we see in these stats as well as some fun brews as well. In any case, thanks for watching. Hope you stay safe out there and we will catch you next time.